This took place on the night of Thursday, August 14th, 2003, the night of the epic power blackout in the northeastern U.S. and Canada. At the time, I was living in Toronto. I was home working when the power suddenly went off. Seeing the traffic lights out and chaos in the streets, I figured I had some time to kill and decided to go for a bike ride. At the time, I had no idea the power would be out for days. I just rode and rode, thinking I would turn for home when I saw that the power had come back on. So even as the sunset crept in, there was no power, so I just kept riding and riding. I wound up quite a long way from my house, and I came to this big park in the west end of Toronto. I was familiar with the roads that ran through it, but on this particular night, with all the lights out, I lost my way. I ended up taking a wrong turn that brought me down a really steep hill. At the bottom, there were a few parking spots, but the only exit was a trail that ran along a line of trees extending off into the silent distance. I turned around, intent on going back up, but seeing the massive hill awaiting me, I opted to check out the trail instead. The tree line extended along a wide clearing and in the distance I could see a city street. I decided to head off towards the street and start making my way back home. As soon as I started following the tree line, I noticed a solitary figure lurking up ahead, on the trail a few steps away from the trees. The second I saw him, warning bells went off. I thought about all the times I'd heard that empty parks in big cities at night could be very dangerous places, but I convinced myself I was just being paranoid, that it was probably just someone out walking their dog. And what were the chances that anything was going to happen? One in a million? I really didn't feel like turning around and biking up that massive hill, so I just kept going. Still, I had a bad gut feeling, so I worked up to a good rate of speed as I approached the figure, just in case. It's a good thing I did. As I neared him, I pulled wide off the trail to go around him. He started shuffling in my direction, trying to cut me off. Instinct took over. I pulled even wider and started pedaling like crazy. He sprang at me as I passed him, muttering some angry-sounding but unintelligible curse at me as he dove and tried to knock me off my bike. Fortunately, I had cut out wide enough and was going fast enough that he missed. I motored like a madman towards the street, not daring to look back. I reached the street, and it wasn't until I was back home, safe and with my heart rate back to normal, that I really realized how dangerous of a situation I had just escaped unscathed. If he'd managed to reach me, I would have been at the mercy of a faceless stranger who wanted to hurt me in a deserted park in the middle of a blackout. This is my first time riding on here, so bear with me. I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Anna and I am 18 years old. I have a boyfriend and three beautiful kids. They're his. But anyway, my story is real and it happened when I was 12 years old. My friend had introduced me to this website called Gaia Online, anime characters who can chat, etc. And it looked pretty fun, so I signed up. I began talking to other people on there and I met this guy. He was 20. We talked every single day, eventually exchanged numbers, talked on the phone, etc. We talked so much that I began to have feelings for him and I asked myself, how? What if he doesn't like me? I ended up telling him he felt the same way. I was very naive and fell for everything after that. We talked about having sex, I barely knew what that was at the time, marriage, and seeing each other in person. He lived in Chicago and I was in Maryland, so we talked from November to March. He ended up flying down to me and staying at a hotel a mile from my house. Yes, I told him where I lived. We decided I would sleep over at his hotel room and tell my mom I was staying with a friend. I told my mom I was going to be staying with my friend this weekend and she looked at me very concerned and asked me, are you sure you're staying with her? Which made me super nervous because I was a good kid and she trusted me. I quickly responded, yes, why? I went back into my room and told him it was too risky so we went to the movies Friday and Saturday night instead. I brought a friend each night who both knew about him. We sat in the movies and he began to sexually assault me. I knew no better than to let it happen. The last night we had together on Saturday, I went home and was on the phone with him. My mom came and checked on me and I hung up so fast she asked me who I was talking to. I said nobody and she took my phone and of course he called. She answered and he said, What's up cutie, can you talk? My mom immediately asked who it was and he said, Oh, uh, wrong number. And hung up. She called it back and I went to the hotel. 
she asked me who it was, and I told her his name, Vinny. And she asked how old he was. I told her. She called the police, and they arrested him at the hotel, and he didn't resist at all, and told police he was in love with me, and we were getting engaged. I was questioned, looked at, and sent to therapy. I fell into a deep depression. I eventually learned in the end that he had rope, tape, condoms, and a knife in his hotel room. I was not the only girl he was talking to. He had basically lied about his whole life. He got sentenced to five years in prison and is now out. I grew from that experience and turned out perfectly happy and normal. I always tell myself that I'm glad it didn't happen to some other girl. Me and my mother have also gone around to schools to tell my story and explain the dangers of the internet. My mother also talked on the news about it. So hopefully, let's never have another encounter. This true story happened to me in 2009. It was summer, and me and a friend of mine were hiking in the Bavarian woods accompanied by my dog, a German boxer dog. We followed an old Roman wine route. We crossed the woods, stopped at some taverns and little towns along the route, and at the end of the day, we wanted to enter the woods again at night. It was a warm, clear summer evening. My home was about seven or eight kilometers away at the time, and we decided to cross the woods as far as possible and sleep in the wilderness to continue our hike the next morning. We searched the edge of the forest for some road to enter when we came across a house. We were so busy searching the woods and checking the map that we didn't realize the man in his 40s standing in front of the house watching us. He came up to us and asked where we wanted to go. When we told him our plan, he warned us not to sleep in the woods at night. He told us the story of some wild hogs that attacked a hunter and his big white dog last summer. The hunter escaped onto a deer stand, but the dog was never seen again. He warned us that it's more dangerous to enter this area at this time of year, especially with dogs, and he offered us to sleep in his winter cabin on a wooded hill behind his house. We were a little shocked by the story, so we agreed. He went up to the garage, he gave us a six pack of water unasked, and showed us where to go. He would follow us with his truck, he said. The vineyard was on a hillside, surrounded by a fence in the middle of the woods. He showed us the cabin, and before he left, he told us we could drink all the beer that was in there if we liked. It had gotten dark already when he came back again with a bottle of wine for us. He was so friendly it was somehow creepy at some point. My friend told me that he got a bad feeling with this guy and wouldn't drink any of that stuff. I had already drank some beer at that point and didn't mind at all, so I continued on to the wine bottle. Then, I lied down in front of the cabin in the open and fell asleep. I remember waking up late at night to go take a piss and found my friend barricaded in the cabin. He was sitting there with an iron bar he had found somewhere, not able to sleep for a second. Then I heard the reason, cracking all around us from the dark woods. We waited for the first morning light and left the area as fast as possible. I often think about what would have happened to us if we would have gone in the dark woods and slept under some trees in the open, not surrounded by a fence. The hillside sure didn't get the name Wild Dog Hill for nothing. I think we would not have made it out of there. The man was creepy somehow too, and he especially scared my friend. My friend mentioned a story from his childhood that has him traumatized to this day. He was a kid camping with a friend in his home garden when a masked stranger came up there. He was a kid camping with his friend in their home garden when a masked stranger came up to their tent, sliced it open with a knife, and looked in the tent before running away. That night in the cabin was the pure horror for him. He told me he was afraid this guy had put something in the wine and that he would come back in the middle of the night again while we were asleep. 